With your CIG TV news update, I'm Jay Earhart in for Donna Bush. In our top story, the Education Minister, the Honorable Tara Rivers, today announced an important development in local early childhood education. Flanked by representatives of the Early Childhood Care and Education Unit, the minister announced that the unit's staff had published the Cayman Islands Early Childhood Years Curriculum Framework and began distribution to the local preschools. The document will serve as the approved first national curriculum for early years in the Cayman Islands. Among other documents, the writers of the curriculum consulted early guidance developed in the 1990s by the late Marjorie Beckles, a former assistant education officer responsible for the early childhood program. Over the last two years since taking office, the ECCE has been able to deliver on a number of key initi initiatives, which we will discuss in more detail. These include publishing and distribution of the Cayman Islands Early Years Curriculum Framework, this very colorful uh, document that you see in front of me here now. Minister Rivers also shared updated information on Education Council guidelines on the registration process for early year centers. In addition, she spoke about amendments to the Early Childhood Assistance Program, which provides funding for the children aged three years and older to attend preschool. More details are available from education.gov.ky, and CIG TV will also re-air the press conference at 8 o'clock tonight. In other news, the Minister of Home Affairs announced yesterday that work had begun to convert the Government Administration Building into the country's center of operations in an emergency. Conference room space on the second floor of the Government Administration Building is being reconfigured to provide space for the National Emergency Operations Center. The project will cost about $22,000 for renovations and about $100,000 in equipment and furniture. The new space will house up to 40 NEOC staff members. Officials expect work on the reconfiguration space to be completed by August of 2015, and once operational, it will replace the existing emergency operations center at the fire services headquarters. And in our final story, the Deputy Governor Franz Manderson recently visited the winners of the recent DG's 5K participation trophies. Mr. Manderson and the Minister of Health Chief Officer Jennifer Hearn who chaired the organizing committee, led a group that stopped by all of those workplaces that had fielded either the highest number or the highest percentage of participants. The Immigration Department registered 39 staff to retain their title for a second year as the government's agency with the highest number of participants. The National Archive, with 100% participation, remained the government's agency with the highest percentage of participants. Meanwhile, the three trophies that were instituted this year Health Services was the Statutory Authority Government Company, or SAGC, with the highest number of participants. They had 49 staff registered. Public Service Pension Board was the SAGC with the highest percentage of participants at 100%. Meanwhile, the law firm, Maples, walked away with the Corporate Cup as the private sector company with the highest number of participants. They registered 59 staff members. The DG's 5K raised $50,000 which will be used to defray the cost of the Cayman Islands' largest ever Special Olympics team as it travels to the World Summer Games in Los Angeles. And as always, if you missed today's news update, you can get all of the details on our Facebook and YouTube pages. And of course, don't forget to tune in to Radio Cayman's Talk Today show, which is always packed full of exciting guests. I'm Jay Earhart. Thanks for watching.